let us pray. Pray that this morning the Lord will talk to you. He will speak to you in the way and in the manner that you understand and obey His word. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you this morning. We exalt you for this opportunity given unto us once again to be able to be here and to hear your word which you have prepared for us all. I pray that, Lord, that we will be the hearers as well as the doers of your word which you have prepared for us. Father, this word will be of a tremendous blessing unto all of us today. Start and end with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we continue, we want to refresh our mind back on what we learned last week so that we can be able to proceed and I will see whether when we come to learn, we are able to assimilate and keep. What did we study last week? We talked about being consecrated in Christ and Presenting our body as a God bless you so much. So we saw about how we can be able to be you know, totally surrounded and then totally what committed to the Lord. So so that we have to give all our entirely to the Lord, the service of the Lord to please Him in all things, both spiritual, physical, and moral. Today we are looking at a topic which is titled. Jehoshaphat's unicorn yoke. Jehoshaphat's unicorn yoke. Jehoshaphat's unicorn yoke. Jehoshaphat's unicorn yoke. We're going to take our memory verse from First Kings chapter twenty-two. <laughs> First King chapter twenty-two. We are reading from verse five. First King chapter twenty-two, from verse five. It says that, and Joseph had said unto the king of Israel, Enquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. And Joseph said, Enquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. That was First King chapter 22, verse 5. Let all say it together. First King chapter 22, verse 5. And Joseph said unto the king of Israel, Enquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Who can say it? Who can say that? Yes, my brother. Yeah. Kudos. God bless you. First King chapter 22 from verse 20, from verse 1 to 53. But we're not able to read all. So if you are on page, you can read it for a certain level. And I'll stop you somewhere. First King chapter 1. 22. Chapter 22, verse 1. And they continued three years without show between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year. That Joseph and the king of Judah came down to the king of Israel, and the king of Israel said unto his servant, Know ye that the Lord will be like his eyes, and leave the stone, and take his head out of the hands of the king of Judah. And he said unto Joseph, Go thou not with me to battle, go thou not go with me to battle to promote the land. And Joseph said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people. My horses and my horses. And Joseph said unto the king of Israel, Enquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said unto them, 
Shall I go against the multiplier the battle or shall I forbear? And he said, No up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Joseph said, Is there not here a prophet to the Lord besides, that we might empower of him? And the king of Israel said unto Joseph, There is not there is yet one man, Micah, the son of Imla, Imla by whom we may the power of the Lord, but I hate him, for he do not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Joseph said, Let not the king see so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, This thing is that Michael the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Joseph, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes, and the voice placed in the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And said and Zedekiah, the son of Chinana, made the son of iron, and said, Thou said the Lord, the day shall thou please the Syrians, until thou, until thou have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied to say, Go up to the most pillar and, pro and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And the messenger that was born to call Micah speak unto him, say, Behold now, the words of the prophet declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king. And the king said unto him, Micah, shall we go against the most pillar to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? And he said, I saw all you just scattered upon the hills, as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to the south in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Joseph, Did I not tell thee that he would prosper? Him, that you prophesy no good concerning me but a hope? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. Amen. Amen. God bless you for that. You will read this list as we are going forward. I love that particular place. So we saw that here. Jehoshaphat did an equal yoke, an equal agreement with the King Ahab, or King Ahab, who was to know or noted as being the most wicked king in what? Israel. And Jehoshaphat took after his father Asa, the righteous king. The Asa, who was a righteous king, Joseph took after him and he did exactly as his father. You see, when you have a godly parent, you have good parents who are godly parents. It is very good that you learn from their legacy and it can be also very good. We we'll learn it as we are moving forward in the topic. So we see that Joseph, as, who was the king of Judah, succeeded after his father Asa. So just after he was at the age of 35 years when he took over the power. At that time, uh, Ahab was in his what? The fourth years, in his fourth years of his reign, whilst Joseph was coming in to be what? King over Judah. Ahab was the king over Israel. We should not for, uh, forget those things. When the split of Israel came, when they, 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 they split it, you know, we had somewhere. 10 tribes and then two tribes on the other side. So we're having two tribes on the other side and then Israel on the other side. So, and that was where Israel, which were 10 tribes, was led by King Ahab, the most wicked. And then the other tribes in the northern side, who were led by Asa, who also eventually died and the son came and took over, called um, Jehoshaphat. Both of them were righteous. Because the father was also very good, he was able, he came and listened and walked into the what the part of his father. Exactly. So we see that the Bible tells us that um, the Lord was with him because he did the right thing. When you are doing the right thing, God will be eventually what with you. So and we see that the Jeremiah says something. He said that that said the Lord learn or lean not or learn not to be uh, like other people. So you don't lean onto other people's other people's what 
evil doing or you don't learn how to do what the evil things so you will also be what dismayed or carried away by the sign of heaven for the hidden are dismayed at what them so it is possible for christian youth also to live a holy life in a decay and a sinful world world it's possible you can be a lily you can be a lily i miss all this dirty dirty thing yes and i saw it severally yesterday we went somewhere i saw all i could see in fact our this whole crowd they were doing one thing though i was in the middle of them i did i did not even i was sitting down there but my spirit my flesh my everything is not with them i was just there to honor as someone who is part of you know the team but i did not take part in it means absolutely nothing but we travel for a long journey come to me and inquire why ah why why oh this so some of them say this is yourself don't mind it's yourself it's so for i said uh, other person came uh, i want to know so so for i want to know so so for i want to do this they are saying all the things yes you must be different though you are miss them you see a lot of thing happen around but you will be what different that is it so you can be different a christian youth you think it will be it will be easy you see them a lot of enjoyment a lot of fleshly lust a lot of things around you but you will be there because you spirit your spirit and the one in you is different you will see it as they don't know anything they don't know what they are doing so you could see that solomon robwam and Ab, uh, abijam uh, abijam the all the evil in the sight of what the lord it was only those are just mentioned that all the kings of what judah so it is only what asa and joshaphat who did what god what wanted them to do working with god in a corrupt world is not possible without being saved when you are not being saved it is not possible for you to walk right before god you must be born again sanctified having the holy spirit and that can help you because as you are seeing those things what are they doing around you other people enjoying those things like this you know? because you don't have a spirit a power in you that can let you help you to overcome it what will happen is that you will be there and you are out. you are being carried you are being taken you are being drawn you are being, ah, why am i or why is it that is me alone let me also ah, after a while after a while let me also enjoy, after i'll go and pray now let me also enjoy maybe to be your last you go and do it and you are dead or you are destroy yourself forever so you have to be very careful i'm going to look at three parts quickly danger of co- compromise there is a danger when you are a child of God and you compromise. You go against it to do evil. There is a great danger. God knew I have to be a very obstinate, very wicked king who sinful or who sin must be punished. But something happened. But something happened. After the pronouncement of divine judgment on Ahab, after killing Nabat, made him to humble himself before God. You see? Without well, the pronouncement, God pronounced a judgment over him and her, his household. He tore what? Or he, he, he got all his dresses, every sackcloth. He was what? He, he tear everything. In those days, to show that you are sorry of what you are doing, you have to tear your clothes. They will tear their clothes, what they are wearing, and then put in sackcloth. That to show that you are sorry of what you are, you have done. And then he did that. And God said, "Okay, I'm going to take the punishment out of you, but I'm going to put those punishment." On the what your children to come you see it somebody who has enjoyed himself by doing it you know god are taking it away now the punishment will come on the innocent children you need to be very careful of what we are doing so as a result of god's decision to postpone his punishment so he experienced what he calls peace with the syrians we were not war again but what happened is that joseph who was on the other side as king of judah went and reconciled with what he even paid a courtesy visit to who to uh, the king ahab the evil king he just visited him keke and when he visited him he said oh then um king ahab took the opportunity to make friends with him to make friends with him so, okay now now that we are together you see i want to go 
again the Syrians and do some war with them. So please, can you join me? Can you accompany me? So no problem. Now we are one. So my horses are yours. My cows are yours. My soldiers are yours. My army is yours. So don't worry about that. I'll go. Immediately God was not happy with it. That was the only thing that Joseph did, and God didn't what lie. But he walked in the will of the Lord correctly. But what happened after he did this? They went to the war. He nearly lost his what life there. Joseph nearly lost his life over there. God really gave him the grace, and then what happened? That he came back, but he lost most of his ships that was to be brought alongside with. He all, he, all of them got broken on the way. He died the punishment, but his life was spared. But it wasn't easy for him. So compromise is very uh, a vital and also very evil thing that when we are we, we are not careful with, we will do with other people. So what is what is therefore called compromise? Whenever you are supposed to know what you have to do, you don't do it, and just you do it in, uh, you know, by by uh, into a hideful way, or you know. So okay, you know this man is not good. Let's say you are to go and do this that place. Sometimes let's say I'm here. I say okay, this girl, uh, this man cannot go and call that, that girl. So okay, you it's happening a lot in among the youth. You know, because you are very close to her, it's okay. The other boy can say, okay, you know, please, socket her for me. Talk, uh, tell her that, you know, or call her for me. You know already that that man, person, the person saying that you should call her, he doesn't have anything better to tell her. What he is to tell to do is to be accomplice, just to be the bridge. But calling her, when you call her, he will, she will do what? Or you will talk to her for on his behalf. You're already compromising your stand. You know what he's doing is not right, but you go there to talk to her, to her in, on his behalf, or you're talking to the boy on the behalf of the girl. You are also partner in the crime and the evil. You're compromising. Ahab or Joseph shouldn't have gone to settle any case with Ahab. Already, God has put him on the left hand side as an evil word. Mark him down, evil king number one. You shouldn't have gone there. So. We have to learn that it's not good to do such things. So when we are um, equally yoked together with some, some somebody who is not good, sometimes we do business together with somebody who is not born again. Let's say you go and do you are doing business with somebody who is not in the same agreement, in the same believing faith with you. Someone who does not believe in Christ. You do business with him. You are doing maybe some work together. You are doing this together. Maybe it is a, 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 a business or maybe it is a school learning or something you are doing. That person is not having a grounded faith in Christ. You know when it's hot, he will go to visit his, whatever he's talking about, he's going to visit his, whatever. You also are going to visit what? Christ. And then there will be two paths, you know, who, which are what? Antagonists. Sometimes it may happen that it is, in marriage, the same thing. The person is not born again. It's in different place. You should are in different place. Your faith is not the same. Your believing is not the same. So when there is trouble, how are you going to do? You will be praying to God and you will be praying to who? Question mark. So that is why you need to be very careful. Business-wise, educational, any side at all, you need to be very careful that you not join yourself with somebody who is not what? Having the same faith in Christ, what? With you. That's what we call by what? Unequally yoked with someone. So I'm going to ask my question: What is uh, an equal yoke, and what are, what does it imply if someone does it? What happened? Yes, equally yoked. Does it mean? It means join the hands together, make one with somebody who is not having what. The same belief in Christ with you. Amen. And when you do that, there's a great danger that you can backslide or backslide easily. Point number two. Deceit and Ahab's calamity. Deceit and Ahab's calamity. After Joseph agreed to fight the Syrians with Ahab, uh, Joseph agreed to do what? To fight the Syrians with Ahab. I told you already from the beginning. So he had this, he accepted to what to join hand with him. Already has compromised stand. You are compromised. You are a child of God. 
Okay, well, you know something, don't worry. Okay, if you, you will not do it, you know something, just give us the money, we'll go and do it, don't worry. You, you will not do it, eh? Oh, you don't worry, okay. Okay, don't worry. Okay, you don't want, you don't want to cheat at the exam, so that they will say that also for have cheat. Okay, you will write it for us. When it's time, eh? You give it us, we will copy. You don't copy, okay? You are already, you are compromised your stand. You are compromised. You are not supposed to do that, such a thing. You stand where you say, I said no, I won't do it and I won't do it. Nothing changes my what? My stand. The prophet was called. When Ahab was to go to the battle, what happened? He pretended to be as if he wanted to consult God. Then he called all his prophets in Israel. He called on them. Do you know what? All those prophets he called, they were prophesying the same thing. Prophesying the same thing. Oh, king, don't worry. When you go, ha, ah, victory. You win oh, the battle, you win it. Don't worry yourself, cry. God has already given you the victory. But like, when you finish, then the Joseph said, Is there any other king there? There's no any other prophet again that you can consult because since these people are saying the same thing. Joseph said that. The uh, king Ahab said, hmm, There's one guy, there's one prophet somewhere. But that man, I hate him. If why? Because when I call him right now, he would never prophet, uh, prophesy anything good about me. That's why I hate him. He said, but don't say that, king, don't say that. Let us call him and see what he'll say. They called him, he came. He said, then he made him to swear that he, whatever he's going to say, he will say it what, on his behalf. That this is what these people said. He sure that he, what, he also said the same thing. The man said, no. Micah said, no. Whatever the Lord told me or would tell me to say, that I will say. You see, the, you see the, the stand of him? Among all these many prophets that were prophesying falsely, the same thing, the 400 prophets, you see? The, the, four, the 400 prophets, the 400 prophets, you see? All the 400 prophets, you see? All the 100 prophets, the, all the 400 prophets prophesy a lie against who? Uh, the same thing against uh all call it it's the same thing concerning Ahab to go and win the battle. But when they call Micah, Micah said, I will say what God will tell me to say. He said, King, hmm, with all due respect, when you go there, fat, they win you. And then after that, if you are dead, after that death, Israel will scatter like sheep without what? A shepherd. Then he turned to Joseph and said, you see what I told you? I told this man will not come and say anything better about me. I told this man will not say something good about me. You see, I told you. So you see, that, that, that means that uh, eventually what happened? Whatsoever that Ezekiah, Ezekiah said came to pass. As exactly whatsoever the Zechariah told, or Micah, sorry, Micah rather told to the prophet, or told the two of them, came to what? Pass. That means he was the what? The, the true prophet. But all that the other prophets so, uh, told, the 400 prophets, all of them they said were what? Didn't come to pass. Where is the Lord? So we should know that there is also, somebody will ask me, is it really that? Is prophecy really biblical? Yes. Prophecy is biblical. It's real. We believe in it. Prophecy is real. Who is a prophet? Is someone who predicts the future. Is someone who God reveals what is to happen in the future. Yes. Is someone who will reveal what will happen. And the thing come to pass. And we as children of God, we need to be very careful of who do we trust to be a prophet? Because we have other people that are false prophets. They say things, it will never what, happen. And we also have certain uh, satanic what, prophet that they also prophesy something that they already put, put down themselves. And they know that this thing will come to happen. And they already protect them, put down. So we need to be very careful. And it's only the Spirit of God that will let us know who is a true prophet of God. So, we saw that uh, in verse 17, he said, and he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills, a sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these 
have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. That's what Micah told the king. Exactly. And it came to pass. So prophecy is a prediction of the future occurrences or occurrence. It is also a divine statement made telling what will happen in the world. A future. And I told you it is biblical. It is, a, it is biblical. It is in the Bible. We can see it in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 to 3. It says that if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or a wonder come to pass wherefore or where of he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet of that dreamer of dreams for the Lord your God Prove it new to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart or with all your soul. So they are there and they will tell you, as two children of God, what to do. From these verses, we see that there are two prophets and there are also what? A uh, false prophet. Amen. I want to ask is prophecy biblical? Is prophecy biblical? Is it biblical? Do you believe in it? Yes, you believe in it. Just that we need to be very careful who is to be a true prophet. People are there. Sometimes you see that during this particular, uh, they are doing this program in the country. This one want to happen. Sometimes it's football. Sometimes it's uh, 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 voting. You see them ch chanting and saying, Halala, and what and what and what and most of you can't see none of them is, none of these things come to pass you already you know where the color of that person they still saw that person already that he's not true if god has said it to them it will what surely come to what to pass so we should be very careful to know who is a true prophet and who is not truly a prophet point number three the death of jehoshaphat in life is like that whether you like it or not in this life you are to live on one day to go away and to continue life thereafter and nobody can live on this earth eternally we should know that and as we are here on this earth we are just preparing about our luggages or our baggage our things we are preparing our bag so that for the day, day to come and we travel out there so life as you are born you are growing you are growing you are growing you reach a time that you also have to leave this very earth that's what the Bible told us that Joseph, the son of Asa, began to reign over the Judah in the fourth year, as I told you from the beginning. So he reigned for 25 years. He only ruled for what? 25 years. But he walked in the way of the Lord, in the way of the Lord, as his father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the sight of what? In the eye or in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, and the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high place so he was a righteous king he obeyed the commandment of the lord like the, his father asa he made peace with ahab which was bad and that king was an idolatrous king he shouldn't have made any king, uh, peace with him because that king had not made peace with god amen so he shouldn't have gone to do anything so joseph's life pleased what the lord he walked in the way of Asa, his father, and he was righteous man, and he took after his father. So it is very important to have godly parent as a, a to have a godly parent is a treasure, it's a benefit, it's a good thing. So any youth, any child who yields to the counsel of his or her godly parent and follow their righteous deeds will prosper like Jehoshaphat. Praise the Lord. If you have godly parent, who are you born again? Parent, you must listen to their counsels. You must listen as Proverb told us. My son, listen to what? The advice of your heart, your father. Don't do this. Don't do that. Go this way. This one. The person talking to you has already gone through that lane and he knows what is there. And you will say, okay, ah, for me, I know. I've gone to school. No. However, there's some this poet that say, however tall the Iroko tree can be, there's someone, an old man standing in what? Just in the what? Plateau or whatever down, can see more far. We're supposed to make sure that because he has already gone through, he knows what is ahead of you. 
and he is telling you that your education cannot predict what is going to happen in the future. But he has lived through and he telling you, I have learned my lesson. I have learned my lesson. And you are not to do that and do that. So you don't shake yourself, say, ah, for me, I, I educated, I'm going this and that and that. You cannot know more than them. You cannot know more than them. Joseph did the same thing. We pray that we will take the example. We emulate Josephat lifestyle. Who really hearkened to us, his father. Who paid attention to his father and lived as him. And also his life pleased with God. And God was with him. With him. So you see that eventually Joseph had died. Yes. Yes. We are here on earth to prepare also ourselves for eternity. Our lifestyle and also at our obedience, of obedience to God's word must make fit or be a blissful, you no, know, rendable attitude to us when we reach what? Eventually in heaven or after eternity. Otherwise, we miss. Uh, otherwise, we. Otherwise, will make us unfit you know, to be able to meet the, the gate of heaven and then we will cast out to the doom or everlasting doom and how death, uh, death was really happened it happened exactly as Zakar said it and he died and then the whole Israel was scattered and nobody was not having a king you see that what Michael said came to pass so we need to follow uh, the example of Josaphat let us now we are going to pray let us close our eyes and pray and say god i thank you for the word and i pray that you help me that i will not be unequally yoked with unbelievers those who are not having the same stand faith with you in christ those who not believe in christ you can't join your hands together with them pray that the lord will help you and strengthen you you also be like Joseph and listen to your parents, listen to your leaders, listen to them and obey whatever they tell you. Don't be stubborn, recalcitrant. Joseph didn't do that. The Lord will use you and help you. That wherever you are also, you'll be a child of God. That you will not mix yourself with other people. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you, bless you today. Glorify you for this word. I pray that Lord you help us that we go according. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.